The emperor looked at Punguzali and said, I have never seen this woman before. But the mask looks a little familiar. Brahmaraya. Who is she? He asked. She is the daughter of Kodakare Tyaga Vidangkar and her name is Punguzali. Aha! That's the reason! said the emperor. Then inside the mouth, this ant's mask is a little. But not like her, there is a big difference, he murmured. His muttering fell softly on Punguzali's ears. Punguzali had never seen the emperor till then. She had heard that he surpassed Cupid in beauty. She also thought that the father who gave birth to the prince should be like that. She was stunned to see the figure of the emperor, who now appeared disfigured by physical and mental illness. She felt ashamed that she had intended to fight with the emperor for abandoning her aunt. Out of fear, amazement, and shyness, she stopped even to salute the emperor as soon as she saw him. Woman! Is it safe for your father to die? asked the emperor looking at her. It was then that Punghuali came to his senses. She realized that she was standing in the presence of an emperor who ruled under the shadow of an umbrella from Sri Lanka to the Krishna River. She immediately fell on the ground and bowed and stood up with folded hands. Sundarachola looked at Anuradhar and asked, Isn't this woman able to speak? Is she as dumb as her aunt? When asked, his face shrunk in agony. Emperor! This woman knows how to speak. She alone can speak what nine women can speak. She is stunned by the shock of seeing them, said Anuradhar. Yes, at the sight of me all fall silent. Not one says anything to me, said the emperor. Looking at Pungazali again, he said, Woman! Is it true what the prime minister says that you saved Prince Arulmas Hivarman from the stormy sea? asked Sundara Chola. Pungjali hesitated and said, Yes, Lord, if it is a crime. The emperor smiled, the sound of the laugh sounded menacing. Brahmaraya! Hear what this woman is saying. If it was a crime, she says. If it was a crime, she says, to have saved the prince's life. I seem to wish that my son had drowned in the sea. Has anyone told her that I am such a giant? That's how the prime minister and the people of the country think of me. Are you counting? Sundara Kalar asked. Sir. She said something out of fear. Don't mind it. Lady. This Chola country owes you a debt of gratitude for saving the prince. The emperor is also overjoyed. You can ask for whatever gift you want for it. Now, tell the emperor in detail everything that happened. Tell it without fear. Said. Let this girl tell me one thing first. How does she know that he is the prince when he says he saved the prince from the sea? Have you seen him before? Said the emperor. Yes, my lord. I have seen the prince a few times before when he went on a ship with soldiers to the country of Elam. Once the prince called me sea maiden. Pungazali said. Aha! This girl is just talking. Said the Chola emperor. Then, after frequent prodding by the Prime Minister, she told everything from Punguzali taking Vandiyathevan to Sri Lanka to taking the prince to Nagapatanam. But as Anuradha had warned, he did not say anything about Mandakini alone. After hearing everything, the Emperor said, Girl! You have done an unparalleled favour to the Chola clan. There is nothing you can do in return. But I ask you one thing, tell me. Why did you not bring the prince here after landing at Kadakare? Why did you take him to Nagapatanam? Said. Swami. The prince had lost consciousness due to a deadly infection. We took him to Nagapatanam Buddha Vihara where there are good doctors. We know that the pictures are very devoted to the prince. The prince could only be carried in a stream in that condition, not on a horse or cart. At that time, there was a reaper in Kadakare. Why didn't you inform him? Pungazali hesitated a little and then said in a majestic voice, Emperor. The whole country knows that Palyavatare is an enemy of the prince. Then how dare I surrender the prince to Palyavatare? She said. Yes, yes. My sons are only enemies of the squires. 
I am an enemy too. The world thinks so. Let it go. Would the storm which the Prime Minister hit here yesterday have been more severe at Nagapatanam? My heart beats that the prince may not be harmed again. Lord, the Chola country is a lucky country. Now this country has great good yoga. The Chola country is a land of fortune, but I am unlucky, Brahmaraya. I wish to see my sons once before I close my eyes. Sir! Do not say such things, who is blessed with such sons and daughters as you? Behold, I will send men today. I will also send my disciple Tirumala to bring the prince safely. Said the Prime Minister. It was then that the Emperor set his sights on all Workadian. Aha! Has he been standing here all this time? Little Pavuvatere said about him himself. Is he the one who jumped over the wall of Palyavur Palace? Lord, there is a good reason for that. Allow me to tell you about it tomorrow. You are already very tired. Said the Prime Minister. At this time Malayaman's daughter, Kuntha, and Vanati came into the Emperor's room. Prime Minister! Stop here for today. The doctors have strictly ordered that the Emperor should not get too tired. Said the Queen. Then she said, This girl sings sweetly. Ask her to sing a Devara song. The Emperor likes the song very much. That's right, Mother. Even my disciple sings Alvar Pasuram well. I ask him to sing too. Said the Prime Minister. Pungujali sang the upper Devara of Kuyainya Vedukilir. All Workadian sang the song Thirukandan Pio and Mani Kandan. When the song started, Sundara Kalar closed his eyes. For a moment his face was filled with peace and relief. Breathing came even and steady. It was known that he had fallen into a sound sleep. As it was getting dark, the nurse brought a lighted lamp. Everyone including the Prime Minister left the room. Only Malayaman's daughter stayed near the Emperor for a while. She also got up to give a signal to the squatters from the next room's doorway. Then, the room fell silent. Only the sound of Sundara Chola's breathing was faintly audible. Even though Sundara Chola fell asleep in the early evening due to the fact that he had not slept at all on the first night, due to the sweetness of the Tamil songs sung by Pungazali and Alwarkadian, his death was not a death of unremembered peace. Old memories and new memories and imaginations of real events turned into dreams and led him to various strange experiences. He and Punguzali were going on a boat in the calm blue sea. Punguzali was pushing the boat and singing a hymn to the sound of the sea. Do not be weary, mind, all your longings will. One day be fulfilled. After a long night. Surrounded by darkness the dawn will rise with blossoms and condemnation. Life-giving goddess, lotus-thrilling gift, and joyous Aaron. Hearing this hymn, Sundara Chola became enraptured. The tiredness that had settled in his heart was gone and the excitement was bubbling up. Sing more. Sing more. He was prodding the flower. The boat was floating in the deep sea. Suddenly there was darkness a strong wind started blowing. Waves rose and fell like mountains in the sea that had been calm before. The boat, which was rocking just ahead like a cradle, now lurched as it reached the cloud region and fell into the abyss. The masts of the sails on the boat were torn to shreds and blown away by the wind. Yet the boat was somehow managing not to capsize. At that time Emperor Sundara Chola was amazed and delighted at Pungazali's ability to launch a boat. The wind stopped as suddenly as it had come. The turbulence of the sea has subsided. There was peace again. In the lower direction, there was a sign of an Aranodea in Vanmagat. For a while the golden sun rose. The water of the sea also acquired a golden color and became beautiful. A few distant islands surrounded by lush green coconut groves could be seen. Hymns sung by Pat Anams in melodious voices arose from the Atives. Sundara Chola realized that they were islands off the coast of Elam. It was on one of those islands that he remembered that he had met Mandakini in his previous birth. Looking at the island, he said, Pungujali. At last you have brought me to heaven, haven't you? How can I thank you? said. 
When Peng Huali did not reply, he looked back at her and was stunned. Because the woman on the other side of the boat was not a flower girl. She is Mantakini. She was the same today as she was thirty years ago. Stunned for a few minutes, he asked, Mantakini, is it you? Is it really you? Is it you who brought me here disguised as a flower? Said. She remembered that she could not hear what he was talking about. Yet he saw Mandakini smile as if she knew what he meant by the movement of her lips. He tried to get up to get closer to her. But he could not get up. He remembered that his legs were useless. Mantakini. I am sick and gone. I cannot come to you, you must come near me. Look, Mantakini. I will not leave you even if someone calls me to crown the Emperor of the Three Worlds once more. Let us not go to the islands near this land of Elam. Let us not go to the islands near here. They will. Leave the boat in the middle of the sea. Far, far away, beyond the seven seas we will go to the sea beyond. Said Sundara Kalar. Mandakini smiled as if she knew everything he said. Emperor Sundara Chola along with his royal queen and children were enjoying a pleasure trip in River Kaveri in a Singha boat decorated like a royal hummus. Those who excelled in Kanavitha were singing. Sundara Chola was closing his eyes in sheer pleasure. Suddenly, alas! Alas! Hearing the cry, he looked up. Let us see the child. Let us see the grace, cried many voices. Sundara Chola looked around excitedly. In the flood of Kaveri, some woman was trying to kill Arul Mazai, his rich child, by holding her hand and drowning her in the water. Sundara Chola, in unspeakable terror, decided to jump into the Kaveri flood. At that moment he recognized the woman's face. He came to know that it was the face of Mandakini who had become deformed. Immediately his body became like an inanimate object. The person who jumped into the water fell into the boat. Sundara Kalar lost his dream and dream at the same time due to the shock of falling on the boat. It was colder than usual due to the stormy rain and his whole body was sweating. A great weight was lifted from his chest when he realized that all the appearances he had seen for so long were dreams. He looked in front of him and there was no one in the room. Only the lamp was burning. They seem to be in the next room because they have fallen asleep. He thought whether he could knock on his hand and call. Let it go a little, let the shocks of the dream appearance go away, he thought. Then a very faint sound was heard from the upper Maki. What would it be? He turned his face slightly and looked at the source of the sound. A figure seemed to be descending over the edge, holding a pillar in the upper Makin.